Hi, welcome back to 17 square meters garden. In today's video, I want to talk about five mistakes, five common mistakes that beginner gardeners usually make and how to avoid them. Of course, the purpose of this video is not to blame anyone, not to point fingers at anyone, but just based on my own personal experience and based on the messages that I receive, I notice that there are some things that tend to repeat certain problems, certain issues that usually happen to people who are just starting their journey with gardening and with plants. So I thought that might be useful to talk about a few of those mistakes and to find some solutions. Okay, so mistake number one, not knowing what plant you grow. If you don't know what plant to grow, then how will you know how to take care of it, right? Seems pretty obvious. But how many times we went to the garden center, we bought a plant, we brought it home, we either lost a plant tag or threw it away, and two weeks later you forgot what plant you bought. Relatable, right? It happened to all of us, but uh, the problem though is that if you, you may still remember that you bought a hydrangea or that you bought a rose, but you forgot what variety you took or you maybe didn't even pay attention to what variety you bought. It's especially important when it comes to pruning because different types of plants within the same genus of plants will require different uh, pruning methods and at different time of year, for example, if you don't know what hydrangea you're growing, you may end up pruning it at the wrong time of year um, and then the plant may never flower for you. So it is really, really important to keep the plant tag, create some envelope where you gather all the plant tags, where you keep them. Better yet, when you bring a plant home, put it on the floor, place a plant tag in front of it and take a picture of it. We all know that we take hundreds of photos of our plants that we never delete. So you will always be able to look back at that photo and to at least um, see the name of the plant. And then you can research online. You can check if you are not sure how to prune it, how to water it, what uh, sun requirements the plant has. All those informations are written on the plant tag. Um, so do keep the plant tag and take a picture of the plant tag so that you can always refer back to it. Mistake number two is buying too many plants. I know, I know. When you have an empty balcony, you want to fill it with plants as soon as possible. When you look online, you see someone else's balcony looking like a jungle. You think, well, my balcony is not as beautiful. I need to buy more plants. I need to make my balcony more beautiful. Buy three, four plants at a time. Don't buy 20, 30 plants because it's if you have never grown these plants before, it will be very, very difficult for you to take care of these plants because you don't know how much water they will need. You don't know how often you should fertilize them what soil they need and what is normal for these plants so how they should and how they shouldn't look like so start slowly i know we all want the balcony to look like a jungle the first year but this this didn't happen overnight it's been seven years that i've been adding slowly plants to my garden because garden is never finished you will always be adding things you will always be changing things you will one plant will be removed one plant will be added something will always evolve so just enjoy that process and take your time, buy three, four plants at a time, read about them, learn how to grow them, get used to them. And only then when you feel like, okay, I feel like I have this plant figured out, I know more or less what it needs, how to water it, only then add more plants to your collection, to your garden, because this way you will save yourself some frustrations and you will grow healthy and happy plants. Mistake number three, growing plants that are not suitable for your growing conditions. Plants won't grow just anywhere. They have requirements. They have sun requirements. Some plants prefer shady areas. Some plants prefer sunny areas. So you must know what is the sun exposure of your balcony. How many hours of direct sunlight does your balcony receive? If it's between zero and three, we are talking about shade. If it's between three and six, it's a part shade or part sun. And if it's above six, it's a full sun exposure. For example, my balcony receives, so the railing pots receive about four hours of morning sun, while the plants that are on the balcony, on the floor, receive about three. So I'm in between shade and part shade. And of course, there are some exceptions, um, like I grow petunias that are full sun uh, flowers, but they seem to do really well with only four hours of morning sunlight. It's always worth to give a try to certain plants, but it's not worth to force plants to grow in conditions that are not suitable for them. Because if you grow a plant, a sun-loving plant in a full shade, then that plant will be stressed. And stressed plant, not only it will not look good, it will not bloom beautifully, but it will also attract pests and diseases that can then spread further into your garden. Second part of this is space. 
When you go to the garden center, it's very important that before you buy a plant, you check on the plant tag what is the ultimate height and spread of that plant. If you don't pay attention to this, you may end up buying a plant that today looks small and cute, but in five years from now, it may want to reach 10 meters high and, and wide. So it's very important because as long as some plants can be size controlled, like there's a lot of shrubs that can be size controlled, but there's also a lot of plants that won't tolerate being size controlled. If it's a plant, if it's a tree that wants to reach 10 meters at maturity and you keep pruning it, you keep repotting it, you keep cutting the roots, in the end you may lose that plant because it's not a plant that wants to be bothered, that wants to be kept small. So pay attention to that and if you have a small space it's better to buy small plants, to buy dwarf varieties rather than just buying a big plant and then having the stress of trying to keep it small. Just choose the dwarf varieties, choose the small plants that are suitable for your balcony garden. Before you buy a plant, pay attention to two things, sun requirement and the size of that plant. And based on that, judge if you have the right conditions to grow that plant. Okay, mistake number four is panicking. Uh, a lot of times I hear that people bring a plant from the garden center, they plant it on their balcony and one week later, two weeks later, the plant is not looking so great. So usually what people do, they start to panic because they think, well, maybe I'm not watering it enough or maybe I'm watering too much. So they either start to give more water or they stop watering the plant and um, they start to think, oh, well, maybe the soil is wrong. Maybe the size of the pot is wrong. Maybe I should just repot it into a fresh soil, into a bigger pot. So they start to repot that plant and that plant um, clearly is doing even worse. Uh, the leaves start to drop, the flowers start to drop, so people start to panic even more and then they think, well, maybe I should just prune this plant because it's already not doing well, so maybe it will encourage the plant to produce new leaves, new branches, and the plant will regenerate thanks to that. But usually it's quite the opposite. At that very moment, you are killing your plant, most likely. When you bring a plant from the garden center to your balcony or to your garden, it goes through a temporary shock which is normal, it needs to acclimate, it needs to adjust to the new conditions because the light is different on your balcony, the humidity levels are different on your balcony, um, the wind blows from a different direction, maybe at the garden center that plant was used to being watered every single day and when you brought it home you forgot, you skipped a day or two of watering. So all of those little things can cause temporary stress on your plant. When you bring a plant from the garden center, you plant it into a new pot, it will go through a moment where it needs to establish its roots. So it's, if it's a flowering plant, it can happen that all the flowers drop. Uh, because flowering requires a lot of energy, but so does the root establishment. Because roots are the most important for your plant. So it will send energy to the roots to establish the roots in this new pot. And only then, once the plant is well rooted in into the pot, it will start to bloom again. So you will have to be very patient with it, just water it regularly and give it a time. If it's just annual plant, it can take two, three, even up to four weeks. But if it's a bigger plant, like a tree or a shrub, it can take even up to entire season. So this year it may not do much, it may not look great. Uh, you will have to wait until next year, until that plant fully establishes on your balcony. And it's only next year that it's gonna really put on the show and it's really gonna look beautiful. And the last mistake number five is thinking that you don't have a green thumb because you killed the plants. Every gardener killed a plant. Just as every cook burned a dish or two or even a dozen before becoming a chef. It's impossible not to kill plants. If you don't kill plants, it means you don't stretch yourself enough as a gardener, you don't experiment enough and you don't try enough. You will not become an expert gardener in two years. That's just not possible. But every year, every season, you will learn something new. You will have your own little successes and failures and every year you will get a little bit better. So just be very patient with yourself and with your plants. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I do hope that you found it helpful. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!